in honorable way are dead, that's what tips populations over the top. Yeah. In 1918, we did dig holes. We buried people in holes. In the months of September and October of 1918, 7% of the residents of Boston between 20 and 40 years of age died. That's what we're talking about. And today, in this country, you think you're going to get intensive care medicine. What percentage did you say? 7%. 7%. Between died. the ages of 20 and 40. Yes. Today, there are 105,000 mechanical ventilators in this country. The kinds of things you think of in intensive care rooms, 80,000 are in use every day for just routine medical care. We have no surge capacity whatsoever. Nobody will have intensive care medicine during a flu pandemic. So we have to think Just now. like what we have had the preview of seeing in New Orleans is what you're talking about. New Orleans has so many lessons for us, even though it was a natural disaster of a very different kind, very limited. The thing was different in New Orleans, Oprah, 47 states and the federal government, whatever part of it, could respond yeah. and basically could help. During a pandemic, Chicago, Bangkok, San Francisco, Walk on Iowa, all of these communities around the world are going to be in it at the same time. There isn't going to be anybody there. That's why Secretary Michael Levitt, the Secretary of Health and Human Services in this country, has said, understand, you will be largely on your own. He's been very honest. He's been very forthright. And it's fair to say that because nobody's going to bring in the Calvary during that time. It won't exist. And we have to prepare our communities now. So we want to know in Chicago, what are they doing if they needed to handle a major increase in dead bodies. So everybody should be asking that of their city government. And every company should be asking that. And I should be asking that of my company. You should be asking that of Harpo. And to not to ask ourselves these questions would mean we didn't learn the lesson from Katrina. Exactly. And I think the second part of it is that's the difference in between hopeless and being hopeful. Okay. We're gonna come out the other end. It's how well we can come out the other end. Okay. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Now you can find new videos every day. They're the kind of videos that will make you look at life differently. They may even make you laugh a little bit. Subscribe to the OWN channel today, and we'll see you on YouTube. Tell me what to do. Approaching left turn. On any given day, any one of us could think we have an attention disorder. Dude, chill out. But how do you know for sure? It turns out that the number of people diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, has been exploding in America. An estimated 15 million people have been diagnosed with it. 40% of them are kids. Tonight, I'm exploring the many paths taken by children with ADHD and how they and their families are coping with the challenges. Families that are trying medication. I was at the point of save my son. Families that are seeking alternatives. How much more rejection could he take? 